We'll look at the design problems. Once you realize that a lot of engineers algebra, you'll go back to some of your algebra and realize that often it's just taking an equation that you know and putting down your knowns and unknowns and isolating a variable. So if you're looking at number 12, so you're looking at something that has an equivalent uniform load, little w equals 2 kips per lineal foot, span L equals 20 feet, and determine a member size based on some criteria. A stringent deflection criteria would be, of course, the most stringent we looked at was the idea of deflection being equal to the span divided by 600. We also looked at the maximum deflection equation for a simply supported uniform and loaded beam as 5 little w l to the fourth over 384 times the stiffness times the second moment of the area, which means that if you solve all these things out, and we did this in class, you can solve for an I required being be equal to 600 times 5 WL to the third over 384 E, or the mobs of elasticity. Again, consistent units means that you're going to want to go here from 2 kips per lineal foot to kips per lineal inch, and from feet to inches. This one is easy enough, 240 inches. This one has a value, and you plug that in here to get an I required. And of course, using the general rule of span in feet divided by 2 plus 2 inches, we get something, in this case, you'd probably want something like a 2 by 12 or a, or a I'm sorry, a 12 inch deep or a 14 inch, we'll go with 12 inch deep, 12 inch deep, which means C or the half depth equals 6 inches. And so once you know I required, you take I required over C, which is equal to S required. And that effectively is what you would look up based on these two. And then, of course, realizing the bending stress is M divided by S. And maximum is WL squared over 8. And from that, you do your calculations any number of beams that you could look at, but if you go ahead and solve this, and then solve these two together, right, you'll have checked for both bending or deflection and for bending stress. And what we realize, and we've talked about is if you design to a deflection criteria span divided by 600, you probably almost surely have meet the bending stress. So let's see what this likes, looks like when we get some numbers here. So two kips per lineal foot in terms of kips per lineal inch is two over 12, which many of you should actually recognize as two inches. One inch is 0.083, this should be 1.0.1. 6, 6, which means that this here is going to be equal to, and I'm going to go ahead and hit a pause here. So remember that E for steel has to be in consistent units. It's 29,000 KSI. Remember, this is not, it has units of stress, but it is in fact stiffness. And so as you calculate this out, you'll get an I required here. Notice that third power is because we canceled one of the lengths here. You generally have to do this putting it down to what is the equivalent uniform load in kips per inch or in kips as the case would be. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a pause, hit my calculator and come up with an I required here. 
when you took those numbers, you have a 618. Sorry, we're gonna to try to do this again. You end up with 600, and talking to myself, 618 inches to the fourth power. And then, of course, if you think about, that's the required I, smota, and S is I divided by C, so S required is around 103. And so that, in fact, is what you're gonna be looking for and then plug back in here. So that's a calculation and a design problem number 12. I forgot, I don't wanna do this, I wanna save these in a background level, so I'm gonna go ahead and save file, save as, learning how to put things around. I'm gonna go and save this as a PNG file. As you start learning to store your things in different ways, this is gonna be prob 12. Dot PNG, PNG files, save transparency. I'm going to save that. I'm going to now save file new. And this time I'll be a little smarter. I'm going to come up with a new layer so that later on I can kind of turn off the background. Problem 12. Now we're looking at problem 14, which is as simple as this. Calculate the radius of curvature given a moment equals... 3,000 kip feet steel is has its stiffness of 29,000 or 39,000 I guess I've been using 30,000 KSI and a moment of inertia ismota of 200 inches to the fourth now those who took 0 0.200 I would give you credit but you have to realize when you have got inconsistent numbers or syntax where you have something that's written 0.200 in a document, there's a pretty good chance that the point is extra, not that it's 0.200. In other words, you can look at things like that when you're, um, you always have the zero point in front of it. And you'll see later on that's going to be the case when you do some programming language stuff that you've got to put the zero point in front of something. All right, so all you've got then is one over rho equals m over ei, but you've got to have consistent units. This 3,000 kip feet becomes 36,000 kip inches. And that's, of course, the reality of using consistent units. We wanted to solve for the radius of curvature. You invert everything, so you have 29,000, right, times 200, if we're doing it as would be expected, divided by 36,000 and you get a radius of curvature, so that equals the rho. That's not an equal sign there. And so we have a radius of curvature equal to, I'll go ahead and bring the calculator up so you can see it this time. There it is, 29,000 times 200 divided by 36 and you get a radius of curvature of 161 inches, which makes a little bit more sense. All right, you've got some pretty good bending on there, and if you later on would think about what this is in terms of depth of the beam, which isn't given, you could see that this is probably 161 inches is your radius of curvature. So that has to do with, you know, theoretically, if that uh, right at that particular point, what the radius of curvature would be. All right, that's a design problem using some basic calculations but keeping consistent units. I'm going to go ahead and now take this, turn it off, got that there. I'm going to take this here and I'm going to export layer image to prob 14. Just think that it wants to go someplace else to PNG. Prob 14. Save. File. New. No, once again, make a new layer so that you can kind of play around with stuff. Uh, not design problems, but problems 16 and 17. Sooner or later, you've got to realize that you stack up your points. And I'm just going to do the first. By X, Y, Z. And so the first column would be at 0, 0, 0. We're going 30 feet across, let's say this way. It's a nine bay building, so this would be 30 and zero and zero and 60 and zero and zero. 
and then 90 and 0 and 0. And the next one would be 25, 30, and 0, 25, 90, and 0, etc., etc., with, of course, a 1 place. So that describes the point matrix. And then the translation matrix looks something like this. I'll put the translation here. You remember, 1, 0, 0, I'm going to leave this blank for now. 0, 1, 0, blank, 0, 0, 1, blank, and 0, 0, 0, 1. We want to translate 20 feet in the northwest direction. So 20 feet in the northwest is going to be no change in Z, but 20 feet in the northwest is going to be you're going to have to realize 20 feet is that. It's a 45 degree, 45 degrees. So this would be uh, 20 divided by the square root of 2 in each direction. 1, 1, square root of 2. So 20 over the square root of 2, 20 over the square root of 2. So that would be a translation. Your rotation is going to be in effect. Now let's look at the small angle approximation. This this three degrees is basically um, a very small angle, and that means that you can know that the sine of a small angle and the cosine of a small angle are definable. The sine of the small angle is the small angle. The cosine is 1 minus the small angle squared. Um, and I think it's over 2 or not. I'll put over 2 here. And that means you can plug the rotation matrix in. You're rotating about the Z. And so 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then 0, 0, 0, 1. And this is a rotation. So this, of course, was cosine minus sine, sine, and cosine. And what you end up doing is you rotate, depending on how you're doing your translation, you're probably going to do your rotation first and then your translation, but these all get multiplied together going this way. So that's 12 minutes. That's design, file, save as, PNG, problem 16, save. File new. That was problem 16. It wasn't really a design. Problem 17. You have to write all of your points in the A plus B I format, if you would, and then convert them into the R E I theta format. So, for instance, obviously the first one would be 0. 0, right? The next one would be 30 and 0, and then 60 and 0, and then 90 and 0, meaning 0 plus 0i, 0 30 plus 0i, 60 plus 0i, and then 90 plus 0i. The next row, of course, would be 0 I'm sorry, 30 comma 25, 60 comma 25, 90 comma 25, and that's it. So that when you went to here and wrote them in, it would be 30 plus 25 I, 60 plus 25 I, 90 plus 25 I. So you do that for all of your points and then convert them into r e to the i theta points and then your rotation you just multiply by e to the i theta and theta remember is going to be equal to the theta in radians this was a three degree rotation so it would be e to the i three times pi over 180 you would. So that would be e to the i pi over 60. You should start recognizing some important angles to learn as you try to uh, 
go on over towards uh, the ability to use Casper Casper Wessel's work of 1797. All right, so only because he's a surveyor, probably number 17 file. Did it in the wrong layer here, but we're going to go ahead and save as problem 17. Finish up quick here. File new. Design algebra. They kind of go together, so you don't just hunt and peck 18. 19 will be just a rotation. I won't do that. And 20 will then finally is this. You remember 20 given, once again, given span equals 10 feet. Given uniform load equals 0 0.5 kips per lineal foot or 500 pounds per lineal foot. Given a deflection equal to one half inch, and given boundary conditions of a cantilever. And if you remember, we decided that the deflection was five or almost ten times as much. It was forty eight fifths of the equation 5WL to the fourth over 384, the stiffness times the moment of inertia smota. In this case, you just go about solving for this by switching or isolating I. Required section modulus, required, I'm sorry, required moment of inertia is equal to basically 48 fifths times 5, let's cancel of course, times W L to the fourth over 384 E times deflection. And you get your I required there. That's all there is to it. Of course you might want to be a little bit deeper and then you also got to check that you M over S or M C over I is less than or equal to 21.6 KSI. So we'll leave it at that that is the calculations we didn't have as a summary file new. I'll go ahead and say no. I'm going to go here, add a new layer. Calculations for a simply supported beam, uniformly loaded, the maximum moment equals dub, whoops. Maximum moment equals WL squared over 8. For that, the deflection maximum for that loading is 5 WL to the fourth power over 384 EI. For a simply supported, if you would, uniformly loaded cantilever, the maximum moment is equal to that times 4 and the deflection is that times 48 fifths. Bending stress is the maximum moment, internal moment divided by S and you'd like that to be less than or equal to 60 percent of the yield stress for steel and it goes down from there. That essentially is all the design equations that were involved in here. When I'll do finally need to finish up a 20 minutes file new. No. The fact that you stack up points by x, y, z, and a 1, dot, 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 x to the nth, or nth x, nth y, and z1, those are your point descriptions. And that you use. A transformation matrix which looks like this one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero and zero 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 one with in fact these being translation 
and these being rotation and scale where the pattern generally looks like this cosine minus sine sine cosine except for the middle for the middle one or for the middle for the middle rotation which is basically about the y axis you switch the sign on the signs file new no realize that you can, can map anything that is x and y into the real and the imaginary plane so that any point can be described by r times e to the i theta where that is r and that's theta and then any, ro any rotation or any rotation is obtained by multiplying the that number by once again e to the i theta when theta is the rotation angle and any translation is obtained by adding a vector that some often is nicely done by the a plus bi format that's it that's a review you can look at them again you need to do this for your designs finishing out and you'll see this all again on the last take-home test thanks for listening